Welcome back, everyone, to Lost Rules Series Week 5 Grand Finals! I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer, and we are going to be watching Gota and Steel Blue go at it. Currently already in the process of banning out a bunch of maps, so we are down to Frostico, Isk Channel, and Fallen Dell. And for the record, maps are banned down to one every time, and then whatever map was recently played on can't be picked by the person who won on it. A little bit tricky, but... So Frostigov and Iski, those are our choices. I have to expect... No, Gold against the choice, so I, I expect it'll be Frostigov. But I don't know. Also, this is best of three. And yes, it is Frostigov. Oops. So yeah, this is best of three. So do pay attention to the scoreboard at the top of the screen, because that will tell you who is currently winning. I mean, for now, it'll be 0-0, zero to zero, so it won't tell you anything, but... I mean, it does tell you it's 0-0. Zero zero. First round. Or first game, rather. Alrighty. Gorda already getting jump, because Gorda likes to go for jump bots. I mean, they are a micro range of players, so that makes sense. And this map does provide a lot of strong tools for jump bots to get around with all the clips and such. And we are here. So yeah, whoever wins this map won't be able to pick Frosty Cove again. I'm not sure if it means it's like auto banned. It's kind of weird. I don't really have a thing for that. Oh, and Jump Bot's also for Steel Blue. Alright, so Jump Mirror on Frosty Cove. Although, admittedly, it's Frosty Cove, so who knows what it'll end up becoming. <laughs> it starts as a Jump Mirror. It could become anything. So far, both players just starting out economic. Kind of makes sense. This is a big map. Like I said, it's why it could become anything, because it is a big map. It is a map where... Like, you can build up a bunch of bunch of different factory types, and then go with that. You can throw into shields, you can throw into Gloki, you could probably get... You can get Gunship, actually. We saw Gunship last time. Earlier today. So yeah, with that, Gorda is going to be... What could we be in here? Uh, gun puppies. Both players with the puppies. So nothing nothing really too notable yet. Go to expanding a little bit faster though. And getting that reclaim. Just taking every little advantage they can. Good thinking. And again, still blue with the commander much more in the back. Go to commander up front. Sort of the typical way of doing things. Not sure why Steel Blue's keeping their commander so far behind, but they are, so that's how it goes. And it looks like we already... Okay, we do have Pyros coming in here from Steel Blue. Golda mainly defending with puppies. I mean, this is kind of Golda's way. They don't usually build a lot of stack defense early on. They rely entirely on superior unit micro. And that is something which we may not see right now because... Well, it's down to the puppy. Gota will be able to jump the commander back in in time, though. The puppy won't be able to do anything. The pyro won't be able to do anything either as Gota's commander comes back in position just in time to save the day. And that constable... Oh, it's gonna slow. It's gonna slow! There is the slow. Oh, but that pyro jump just in time. Recon com, not quite there yet. Beautifully done, Steel Blue. Ripping apart all of Gota's energy infrastructure. Revenge Pyro coming in here, but it looks like Steel Blue is going to be able to escape scot free. Nicely done. Very nicely done. And yeah, another another one for the road. Why not? Point out this whole time Steel Blue has been expanding, so that's been a solid play, although admittedly not as efficiently as it could have been. This entire section could have been taken. But hey, it's Ah, Pyro Pyro got taken out ultimately. 
Bit of a shame, that. But still, it was a very well-played... Very well-played jump setup there. Got rid of a bunch of Golda's economy, got rid of a lot of their en energy infrastructure. Opened the door to expand over on their side of the map. Oh. Oh yeah, you couldn't... You can jump... Wow, I didn't realize you could actually jump that. Oh. Oops. Okay, I guess you can. It's... It, no, I can't. Gah, screw it. Anyway. I did not realize that. I mean, apparently Steel Blue has been practicing their jump bots. They know... On this map, they know what they can do with what. Or at the very least, they're just... Desperately trying, experimenting, and improvising, and it's working out well. Not sure which it is, but... So far, so good. Unfortunately, they've lost a second Pyro, but this section base is... Totally secured. Pyro cannot get through a single Lotus easily, let alone two. Right, that Pyro should... Ah, uh, survives with 5 HP. Same time, Steel Blue able to hold off the side. So, overall, Steel Blue is... Yeah, is doing fine. Yeah. Steel Blue's got a really strong position to work from here. Golda's Commander very far forward. That, mm, I don't know. Pyros aren't the best comm killers, but... Five pyros against an unupgraded commander with very little support. I don't know that that's safe. Uh, well, that's as we're soon to find out. Pyros coming in here. The Lotus will go down quickly. Goddess commander. It's oh, it's close. Pyro's jumping after it, but it's not going to live long enough. Goldus Commander is mean, walking Lotus. That was a huge loss. Steel Blue might have just thrown away the entire advantage that they had early on. At the very least, though, they're able to secure their half of the map. Like the south half of the map. Still a bit tricky, but they've, they've at least gotten rid of the Lotus that was built up there. Why are we going to see moderators? I expect they're going to get moderators soon as a counter. Oh no, we're getting constables. Go to going for constables because why not go for constables? That's actually a really good idea. I have that extra slow in there. Like, honestly, if Steel Blue threw a constable into this, if either player threw a constable into this group of units, they'd it would be the force multiplier they need. Although, to be fair, it's the... Steel Blue still has the advantage in terms of numbers. Like, this half of the map is theirs. It's It belongs to them now. It and all the reclaim contained therein, or at least maybe not. Go to, go to contesting the hell out of that. But it could be. I mean... Yeah, I got this set up here. Uh, maybe. It's a little uncertain. You know? There's the push once again. Pyro's coming in. Three Lotuses. Ah, that's a lot, though. Go to Commander upgraded to the, to the Lightning Gun. But, at the very least, the Pyros have secured the south side for Steel Blue. The reclaim can begin. Still going to be quite the, quite the fight, but Steel Blue has maintained an economic advantage this entire time. They've been... At least on par with with their attrition, if not ahead. Oh yeah, and there's constables here now, so these pyros are gonna have a tough time getting in. Jack coming in here, nice play. Jack able to completely break this half base. Man, Steel Blue is they're really putting Goto on the back foot here. This is not looking great for... I mean, Golda's gonna... I mean, going for the revenge here for the Pyros. Just one metal extractor each. Along with the backside. Oh, but the backside was completely unbuilt. But also undefended. Okay. Well, of course, there's the jump over the lake. That's a possibility. And actually, that does pull all these Pyros into a great position to defend against the incoming Pyros along the back. Same time, and a counterattack coming in here. Goldus Commander. Don't go for Goldus Commander. Steel Blue, that's not going to work. 
That's not going to work. You secured what you needed. You got what you needed. Although, okay, they're not, they're not hunting the commander. But we are seeing gunship switch. I called it. Yeah, gunship switch. Did not call harpy though. I mean, it's a good choice. Got the slow and everything, but I guess it's well, it's reasonably accurate. Doesn't have to stay too close to the pyros. It's not at risk of being burned like locusts would be. And it has slow. Gota might just have turned this game around. I feel like a lot of it's going to come down to reclaim if Steel Blue can take some reclaim back. They're making sure to get quite a bit of it. So it's... It, that is what it depends on, and... Well, Steel Blue is not... Holding the, hold, uh, holding the fort pretty well at the same time. Not losing too much in the back lines. Able to rebuild pretty quickly along their south side. Got Lotuses to mostly stop Pyros. This is still a section they could jump in on. So, yeah, there, there's, a, there's a risk. There's a risk. It's not entirely open yet, but it's not bad. Of course, the Harpy's coming in. There's no Toads to respond to that. Oh, never mind. There's a Toad right there. There's indeed a Toad to respond to that. We're getting Toad Pyros are build right now from Steel Blue. And Gorda accessing, surprisingly enough. Ooh, and apparently Harpy's on fire enough to kill them off. I gotta figure out what... Oops. What is the current army value, relatively speaking? Steel Blue is ahead by... Steel Blue is ahead by 2,500 metal? Holy... Okay, I mean, admittedly, a lot of that, a lot of that is the... Is the Toad. But then again, the Toad is a very cost-effective unit for dealing with those Harpies. Just a question of whether the Pyros can take them out. And it looks like the answer is... Yeah, no, actually, the answer is no. The answer is yeah, no. The answer is yes, except the Toad can jump in, so no. And, yeah, as expected, the Harpies are no longer being produced. Hopefully Steel Blue realizes that. Indeed, they do. They know that the Toads they have are plenty to stop the Harpies from causing problems. And at the same time, they've secured the south side of the map, so Steel Blue maintaining an economic advantage. Steel Blue? I, like, this is just an impressive match. The fact that they're, like I said, they're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Golda here. And... Like, we are seeing this work out. I mean, Gota might... Gota might tilt. I don't know. I mean... We, we know just as well. Hey, Gota, Gota's tilt-proof. We know it. Gota never gets mad. He never, he never swears in chat, no. No, no. Is, uh, no way. Never gonna happen. Oh, yeah. People... The, the widget for reclaim. Yeah, there. it's a default off widget that just shows... It's called Area Highlight, I think. Reclaim Area Highlight. I'll go over the way to get to it once the game is over. There's too much going on. I just don't have time to navigate through the settings right now. Oh, the Toad! The Toad doesn't... Ah! Didn't jump away. I think that's the only Toad that was built. So the Harpies are still going to be a problem. Unfortunately, the Pyros had retreated too quickly. So there's not really a whole lot going here for Steel Blue. Gold has managed to take the north side and hold it. And again, these Pyros, I don't know why they're going for it here. Moderators would make more sense. Another Toad coming in. Good. Get the replacement. But yeah, Moderators, I feel like there would be a very strong option right now, just as additional support. Same time, we have Strider Up coming in here from Golda. With a Dante being built. And Gota has managed to actually take well, a lot of reclaim, primarily getting an economic advantage from the reclaim. Steel Blue has already grabbed most of the reclaim that they have nearby. Still some, but not much. Gota near him might have a problem here when it comes to Pyros. And there's the. Mo okay, there we go. Steel Blue with the Moderators. Good call on that, actually. With the Dante coming in as well, the Moderators are going to be very useful. But then again, just against Pyros, they're going to be very useful. 
as are the constables coming in here. I mean, they have the repair, yes, but they also have slow damage. Ah, but they're not engaging! Oh, that would have been so useful. I mean, granted, this is great positioning. Steel Blue's still winning on the fact that the army got split up. Gorda's basically fighting two fights in a row rather than all at once, so... That was a huge advantage for Steel Blue there, but again, Gorda getting a stronger and stronger economic advantage. The Dante is just about up. Okay, I'm just about 60% up. So, Steel Blue also losing everything over to the side. Unfortunately, this it is jump bot. You cannot rely on having simply a front line for defenses. You have to have a lot of defense in depth, and that was not the case. Steel Blue lacking that, losing all their metal extractors in the back, and they don't have any constables nearby to rebuild them quickly either. Ravens are being built up. I'm... That is that going to be a calm dive? I think it's going to be a calm dive. Dante's coming up though. Dante would it would take three cycles to kill a Dante with four ravens. Oh man, go to go to winning on reclaim is so hard right now. Just metal donations coming in here on top of the fact that Steel Blue has been consistently losing their back line. I mean, I think... I like the way the Steel Blue was pushing forward here, but it's it's kind of over now. And in here, same thing. Like, I like the switch to Moderator. I kind of wish it was an actual switch. Raven won't help. Like, Raven really won't help. I can. I don't know if they're trying to go for... If they're trying to go for Calm Dive, that's not going to work, because Recon Comms... Especially when have all this stuff around it. Like, Recon Comms don't get away with it that... E like, get away with jumping away that easily. But it's a matter of buying time, and there's enough static defense here that the the Ravens will not survive. And I mean, it's not like Gorda doesn't know, or Steel Blue doesn't know that. They're well aware. It's just, I guess they're figuring there's sort of potentially an opportune time where Gorda is running forward with her commander. Man, this, this pressure might be too much. Steel Blue... They have the forces in position. Oh, getting a cornea. Interesting. I mean, an interesting call, but I'm not sure how well it's going to work. Oh, that, never mind. There it goes, and there all the pyros die. And yeah, it didn't work very well at all, did it? Well, an interesting approach, but again, it's just... Koda had too much built up. They started to win on attrition. They got a stronger economy, and it's just... Gradually turning it around. Steel Blue. I'm afraid this match is not yours anymore. Losing a Raven as well and no air pad either. Not yet, anyway. There's air pad being built up in the back. So yeah, the Dante. Proving to be quite the formidable foe on top of all these moderators in the back. Oh, man, I think if Steel Blue had built moderators when they went to attack earlier here, and they're really pushing hard, even before the Harpies came in, then a moderator pyro would have been a really strong combo. Or a few moderators on support would have taken out the Harpies, would have dealt with the pyro, helped out with the pyros. Steel Blue could have easily turned it around from there. Not really turned it around, they were providing constant pressure. Just sealed the deal, really. That and also forgetting the fact that there's room for stuff to jump around, deal some damage. The frontline defenses do not work against jump bots. Also, this map, like, there's ramps here. Non-jump bot units could, like, take this ramp instead. Doesn't have to be the direct path. Well, at any rate, there's the desperate last stand. Nope, not even. Steel Blue throws in the Dell. Not even going to throw those pyros to their death. Just going to have them blow up dramatically. Well, that was a remarkably even game. Can, like, really, well done Steel Blue. Just for even pushing Gorda that hard. This, honestly, was remarkably impressive. And granted, it's also, it's, it is best of three. So, it's not over yet. 
there's still room for Steel Blue to potentially take this back. They are going to have to do... Do a little more to actually pull it off, but it's... It was close. Like, it was... They had a chance. So I think if they were to just keep going and... I guess... I mean, just a little more practice, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, Frosty Cove is, like, partially banned, I guess. Anyway. So, Golda can't pick Frosty Cove. It's not technically banned, but it kind of is. So we'll go with that. Considering, I think Golda does get the pick? Not sure. Yeah, Golda would get the pick. So, yeah, I'll just set it to ban. And Baron is out as well. And we aren't going to be seeing Iski unless we go to a map 3. Bondel is out, leaving Mech Mercurial Intersection or Frosty if you really want to. And now it's Intersection. Go to Camp Bay Frosty Cove, has to pick one of the two. So it's Intersection is the map two. So yeah, if I guess it is relevant if we have like whether or not it's a full ban or a partial ban, because a someone one can't repick kind of thing. If it's game three, but for I just don't I don't know. I know how I would do it. It just makes it really complicated. And OBS, I don't know how to deal with that right now. Anyhow, let's get to the match itself, as that will be starting. We will be on an intersection, and I will have the hiccups. That is how a Saturday is going to be. Potentially the last game of the week. Steel Blue with Cloaky. Go to Jump Pots? I don't know. They like their Jump Pots. But they might think that shields are being used and jump shield, I think, is better for shield. Jump cloak, I'm pretty sure, is better for jump. Well, let's see what happens. And it is indeed jump bot. Okay, Gota just decides jump bot. Jump bot is the order of the day. Oh, Gota again, going for early puppies. So, with... Jump Cloaky, yeah, puppies are basically in our reckoning glaives that try to come out. So good luck to Steel Blue. This is not as easy a matchup as the last one. Like Jump Bot, Mirror, Steel Blue, they they matched Golda blow for blow up until the point where they lost their backline mexes, and Golda basically was able to turn a bunch of pyros into metal reclaim into well into 20 metal advantage. But Cloak versus Jump, I don't know. Those puppies are scary. Oh, wait. Maybe not. Maybe not. Right, Glaze got a buff to their HP. I still think puppies will kill them. Oh, yeah. Puppies will still kill them. There's not really the biggest difference. I don't know if it makes... I don't know. We'll see. I'm trying to think. I can't if there's any other changes that change the way puppies worked that would cause them to be less of a threat. Oh! Range! Yeah, so properly micro, Steel Blue actually has a chance here. Are we seeing more puppies? We are seeing more puppies. I think Gorda is just expecting Steel Blue is going to screw up on the micro once and that'll be the death of a few glaives. I don't know though, Steel Blue is expanding real fast. 
very much relying on the fact that it's... Oh, it's switch... Oh, wow. Switching to knights. Of course, yeah. Pyros do not like knights. Nice play there, coming in from Steel Blue. And that will mean... Okay, that Raider's dead. The Lotus is maybe dead? Yeah, the Lotus is dead. I mean, puppy's coming in. Not enough! Another puppy coming in the side. The Pyro is still going to be the problem, but hey, the Glaive got rid of some defenses. I mean, it's a, not the best trade. Didn't really get in metal extractors, but did open things up a bit. And of course, this is clearly going to be turning into a late game or late ish game thing again, early nights. Because Pyros. Pyros are an absolute pain in the butt to fight with Glaives. But knights just stun them out of the air. Like they they hit accurately enough, generally. And they don't care about the pyros jumping very much. So yeah, that'll be that steel blue. Ooh, okay, well, able to defend reasonably well. Lotus helps. And the knight down as well. Might have been revealed that this is what's happening. What does Steel Blue know as far as location? Quite a bit, actually. Enough to know that this is maybe the way to go. Ah, not up that ramp, though. Not safe. Knight not getting a whole lot out of it. That knight is... That knight is prob probably dead? Maybe dead? Yeah, that knight's dead. But there are more knights where that came from. Knight... Reaver is our is our setup and ra oh no radar does see that GG is not incoming the knights have this and that's why knights stun out pyro that is why you go for knights nicely done steel blue knows what to do chat's I mean chat you see is blowing up in game but no this is this is just how knights do that's why Steel Blue went for Knights. Well played. Like, Steel Blue has an anti-pyro composition pretty much on point. I expect Gold is going to switch over to Moderators eventually? Nope. Not yet. I mean, once Moderators come up, it's a little bit trickier. There's not a lot of great options for Cloakie for, mod for mods. Glaives get one shot, so they can't, can't really dodge. Everything else gets slowed down. And of course, Radar is here, and Steel Blue is completely on point for this. Gold, however, does have an economic advantage. Steel Blue finally building up the Southwest, so it's. or rebuilding the Southwest. So that'll help, but I don't know. That Pyro just sort of sitting there. Not really sure what to do. Same time, though, more. More knights coming in. And there's... Yeah, so the monitors are not going to be easy to deal with. I think Gold is switching hard mod. Yeah, it's pretty hard mod. And there comes the pyro again. It's committing suicide once again. I mean, the knight was right there. It does get rid of a couple wind gens, but it's not huge. Steel Blue, honestly, the bigger problem is that they are relying on wind gens and not don't have any backup power. Oh, Scythe! Good good call! Yeah, that actually is the right call here. Just try the moderator slice with Scythe. Man, Steel Blue's got this on. I got this on lock. Just watch Steel Blue. If you want a masterclass on how to fight Jump Bot with Cloakie, just watch Steel Blue right now. They know exactly what to do in exactly what way. Because, I mean, Glaives aren't going to work against Moderators very well, but Scythe's not a bad choice. Although, admittedly, with Moderator backup, it's going to be a bit tricky. But it still works. And, of course, the Knight to get rid of the support Pyros. Man, that is... Yeah, this is definitely showing the strength of a lot of these underused Cloakie units.
So yeah, that's that is how you do Knight Scythe Reaver for support a little bit against puppies. I don't think glaives even come up in this matchup. I don't know if they're relevant. I feel like they're not. I feel like this matchup is entirely one where you just don't play with glaives. Just because the puppies can take out the glaives. I mean, granted, yes, it's nice for the raiding, but the puppies can take them out so well, as can moderators. It's like everything Jump Bot has kills glaives. So just use not glaive. Use size. Use knights. Use other things. Maybe be careful with the size. That they they aren't. They're pretty fragile. All right, steel blue. Oof. Could use another caretaker. Oh no, never mind. They're they're good. They got conjurers. Gold on the other hand has the caretakers up as well as both players. About, about even when it comes to their production. Oh, so that's coming in from the back. Here to take out everything. Oof. Well, add some support, at the very least, provides a distraction, but I don't think it'll be enough completely. It helps, but again, it's not quite enough. The knights are still... They're still dead. Even without the puppies, they'd still be dead. I don't know. That's not really worth it. That was a lot. 1.3k medal. Steel Blue has to win this. Like, they have to take it on this second assault, or else they've lost the game. It's simple as that. Gota gets so much reclaim off this that they can secure it. And also Jack. Oh, Jack coming in. Uh, I don't know. That's a lot of lotuses. And it's also a lot of Jack. Jack is a lot of unit. <laughs> Opens up the rest of the path. The rest of them. And over on the north side. Nope. Reclaim turns into puppies. There's no way Steel Blue is going to get that back. And unfortunately, the Reaver is not nearby, so the puppies... The puppies have free reign. Steel Blue looking increasingly desperate. Unfortunately, losing their commander now, or just about losing their commander. Now the Jack's got it. The Jack has it. It's over. And unfortunately, the puppies over here are preventing any advancement. There's no Reaver here to deal with it. And Steel Blue throws in the towel. That is game. That is match. That is series. That is tournament. Gota takes it. Takes it 2-0. And that is that. We have our winner. But I gotta say, Steel Blue, they did not get third place this time. And actually did very well for themselves. Honestly, they... I'm impressed. Like I'm I'm quite thoroughly impressed by how well Steel Blue did in those matches. So I, yeah, good job. I'm I really expect to see Steel Blue probably like, like securing second place more often now. And with that kind of play. That was That was remarkably strong. Like, again, they They kind of stood up to Golda. And a match with that I generally consider to be kind of uneven for Cloaky. Okay, fine step pointing out in the chat that knights are more expensive than the pyros and sides are more expensive than mods. That's true, but knights are also hard counters to pyros and sites are pretty much hard counters to mods. So it's more a matter of keeping them alive in the interim. Like every mod or pyro that it, every pyro knight kills, every every scythe the mod kills is a free kill. So it's just a question of whether, or at least in smaller engagements. So it's just a question of making sure those engagements happen so you just never lose your knights or scythes. Like, if you start losing them, yeah, it's a real problem. But if you keep them alive, then, yeah, Clicky wins. Anyhow, that is that for this week. So thank you all for watching Week 5 of the Lobster Rule series. Thank you to all the players playing. Congratulations to Golda and Steel Blue and Bakatsu for top three and Stuart for four. Should be seeing ref that reflected in their standings as of the next week. It doesn't, it doesn't reflect it immediately. That's It's a thing that has to be updated manually so that'll be done afterwards so next week we will see the results from this week and also thank you to crow for organizing this or crow psycho i can't remember who's calling himself here Har haramitsu i think it was 
Well, anyway, thank you, thanks you them for organizing, and again, thank you all for watching. Have a good night, everyone. See you all next week.